Instant match reaction. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Everton 3, Burnley 1 at Goodison Park. First game back at Goodison Park under the lights for... I don't, I don't know. Far, far too long. And what a return to the old lady in the night it was. What a win that was for Everton. 3-1 after a pretty dross first half, let's be honest. A pretty dross first half. Not very exciting whatsoever. Burnley seeing... Far too much of the ball, a five at the back formation, obviously, or three at the back, whatever you want to call it, that Rafa Benitez started with, with Ben Godfrey, Michael Keane, Yeti Mina as, as the centre-back, wasn't quite working in our favour, we couldn't keep a hold of the ball for long enough, we couldn't move the ball well enough, um, and Burnley were just having, you know, far more, you know, far better of the ball, and, and they were utilising it more, getting it forward, okay, they weren't creating many chances, but they were causing Everton some real, real issues, and we go in at half time knowing that it's not working, knowing that something needs to be changed. Obviously, massive blow before the game, uh, finding out Dominic Calvert Lewin is out for you know what might be two, three weeks. Um obviously big, big blow to to, to the to, you know to the team. Um obviously James Rodriguez not available as well for whatever reason, probably because he isn't fit. Great to see Ben Goffrey back in there. But we go in at half time knowing that Something needs to change, you know, we need to come out and it needs to be a change of system, a change of formation, a change of personnel, but something isn't quite working. And just sounds and do bear with me, we'll go on to talk about it in a second, but again, wasn't massively in the first half. The Marty Gray was picking the ball up, trying to move it, but couldn't quite find his final ball. Luca Dean's crossing was poor, Richarlison didn't have much service whatsoever. We go in at half time, we come out for the second half and still the manager hasn't changed it, still, you know, you can see... <coughs> It's not quite working. We're not quite getting a hold of the ball. Um, Burnley go 1-0 up through a, a typical Everton goal to concede, really, ball in the box and, and a header. Um, and then, you know, five minutes later, Everton react. Great ball in by Anzos Townsend. Michael Keane gets up ahead of his man and headers it brilliantly home. And to be fair, look, Michael Keane had a, a bit of a shaky first half, but I thought in the second half he was absolutely excellent. But that's when the change come at one all. Andre Gomez comes on. Ben Goffrey goes off who... Again, I thought done okay. Was I don't think he was fit. I think you could see that he was struggling for fitness. He didn't really want to go on the morale and runs that he usually goes on or move the ball out the defence. You could see that he was a little bit hesitant to do that. And that's understandable. He hasn't kicked the ball in a competitive competition so far this season. But as soon as Andre Gomez come on, we switched back to a four at the back formation. We sort of went into a 4 3 3. That was it. Then Everton were just electric from that point on. Andros Townsend. Oh my God. And Josh Townsend, that lad has got a better left peg than Lionel Messi. And I don't care what anybody says. He's got a left peg like a rocket, mate. Like an absolute rocket. He's like a Marvel character. He's got superheroes, that fella. He's got superpowers, that fella. Sorry, he is a superhero. The ball comes off his left foot. And if you're getting in the way of it, I don't know how Nick Pope didn't break his arm saving that second shot. I really, really don't. Because he hits that ball and it must travel at about 3 million miles an hour once it comes off his foot. Great ball in. For, for Michael Keane's goal, to be fair, absolutely worldly of a cross. And Michael Keane does brilliantly, to be fair. I, I feel a bit sorry for Michael Keane because as soon as the ball went in, everyone just sort of went to Anzos Townsend to celebrate. But it's actually a really good header by Michael Keane. But that second goal, oh my God. I could get used to this going to Goodison Park. And ev in every single game we go to Goodison Park, we see a screamer. I could get used to it easily every single day of the week. Bring me that every day of the week. Bring me Everton scoring worldies every single time we go. To, we, we play at Goodison Park. What a goal! What a goal! What you, you see? You're seeing in real time, and you don't quite believe it because, as I said, he's hitting at about forty-five thousand miles an hour. So it, before you know it, it's in the back of the net. But the dip on it, I, I firstly, I thought it took a deflection at first. I did, because the dip on it just seemed like he did it. A shot, and it had deflected over the keeper. You watch it again on the replay, and it's absolutely astonishing. Absolutely astonishing. He didn't cost a penny, that fella. He didn't cost a penny. This penny here, that me ma got me for me birthday, that probably cost about seven quid. It's seven quid more than Anzos Townsend cost Everton. What a signing and what a player and what a performance that they struggled in the first half. But to be fair, he was getting back, he was working hard, he was battling, he was fighting for the ball. And yes, he wasn't quite getting forward as much as we would have liked him to. But as soon as we changed in that second half and he had a little bit more freedom, oh my God. And then instantly, straight away, we go 2-1 up. A minute later, great ball through. I think it is after like the quarter, he plays the ball through. The Marty Gray's going one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Bread and butter for this lad. Absolute bread and butter. Nick Pope, England's number one. See you later, mate. The Marty Gray slots it past Nick Pope. Three goals in three games for our number 11. And you know what? That lad only cost one and a half million quid as well. Oh my God, I can't believe it. And 
all of a sudden, Everton are 3-1 up within the space of six minutes. We were 1-0 down five, six minutes later. If that, five minutes later, we're 3-1 up. And if, uh, it's electric. We're, we're continuing to get forward. We're continuing to get up early. And this is what I was talking about a couple of weeks ago uh, in the Southampton game when I said we went 3-1 up and we sort of carried on. We kept going. It wasn't like, right, shut it off now and defend this lead for... You know, the 20 minutes, 30 minutes that's left of the game. See it out. Don't do anything stupid. Just calm it down. It was no one, another one. No one, another one. No one, a third. I want a fourth. I want a fifth. I want a sixth. We get a fourth within, again, another minute. Uh, obviously, Abdoulaye Decore. It's ruled offside, unfortunately. I haven't seen the replay again. But all of a sudden, Everton have gone from being 1-0 down. And, you know, heads down. Confidence is low to... Everyone's at the stadiums bouncing, the lim limbs are everywhere, hands off towns, ends from Wildies in the top, left hand corner, right hand corner, whatever it was, the Mari Gray slotting goals again. You've got Michael Keane who all of a sudden turned into Brian Maldini. He was excellent in the second half. Didn't think he had a bad first half, I just don't think he looked as cool and confident as we would have liked. But in the second half, once he got that goal, it almost gave him this massive confidence boost. And all of a sudden, everything he had to deal with, he dealt with brilliantly. Yet he meaning in that second half after the goal conceded, uh, which I haven't seen again, but after the goal conceded, Yeti Mina again getting up, winning every header, battling, getting in the you know the ear of Chris Wood uh, and Ashley Barnes, who by the way found it far too easy in that first half to dominate Everton's defence. And this was always going to be the worry coming up against the Burnley side was that those two up front would find it too comfortable to deal with Everton's back line. And I think that's part part of the reason as to why uh, Rafa Benitez started with a back five, to be honest with you, with the three centre-half, because he wanted as much defensive cover as possible. But as soon as we went back to the, the four at the back, and obviously Ben Goffrey come off, which I think is the right decision. he done OK, Ben, but you can see he's not at full fitness, which is no problem. Don't blame him for that whatsoever. But as soon as we went back to the four at the back, they didn't get a sniff all game. They didn't get a sniff whatsoever for the rest of the game. And Everton all of a sudden went from... Absolutely, you know, down and out and off, you know, couldn't couldn't keep the ball, couldn't move the ball, couldn't create a chance to Gomez coming on. And, and to be fair to Andre Gomez, it wasn't just a it wasn't just a system change, it wasn't just a formation change. Andre Gomez himself come on and, and played really well, got the ball, controlled it, took it down, held it up well, picked it up and moved it when he needed to, and very, very nearly scored. Should have scored, in fact, I think he was offside, but should have scored, slotted the shot just wide. Um of the post, there was another chance at the end of the game where you know we played about fifty balls. Uh, you know, again, the, even the Olays without the Olays were out of Goodison Park. When was the last time you heard Goodison Park? You know, Olaying for 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 the ball, absolutely mad scenes. And again, another ball's cut across the box. This time, Alex Wobie's come on, and and um, and you know somebody should have been on the end of it. That game could have easily been four, five, six, one comfortably. And when you look at the first half and you think of how poor of a first half it was, especially from Everton's point of view, and you would if you would have said to me at half time, Cam, Everton are going to turn it on in the second half, we're going to be electric here. It, you know, we, it might be four, five. I'd have said not a chance. Might we might get one, two, but not a chance. And I know we only we, you know we only managed to score three, but we had the chances there to go and get more. And Burnley just couldn't deal with us. They couldn't deal with us in that in that second half, and it was that change of system. Bringing on even Alex Awobi towards the last five minutes to just add a little bit something different. Solomon Rondon, of course, making his debut, which was was great to see. Didn't really get many touches of the ball, but great to see. Obviously, Richarlison wasn't very happy with with that decision. But look, Richarlison will always have his moments where you know. Again, some people will say. You know why is he spitting his dummy? This, that, and the other. Why isn't he just happy that the team are winning? And why isn't he? Why doesn't he just get on with it? Some will look at it that way. I look at it as Richardson's probably thinking we've literally just scored three goals in five minutes, and I haven't scored one of them. I want to stay on the pitch because I want to score. I want to be on the score sheet. And when he's taken off, that opportunity goes. So he's not very happy about it. Could he handle it a bit differently? Probably yeah. A bit better. Probably yeah. A bit more professional. Probably yeah. But the lad just wants to play footy and wants to score goals. And he would have seen in that moment, in that second half. When you know Gomez come on and we change the system and we, and we just couldn't become alive, we come alive. He, Richarlison will have seen this is me chance here to go and get a you know go and get a goal, go and get a you know maybe a, a couple, but obviously it wasn't to be. But he worked hard, he worked immensely hard, he ran round, he battled, he held the ball up, he was kicked all game. You can see why you know he, even if Dominic Calvert Lewin would have been fit for this game, you, you you could have seen why Rafa Benitez would have been hesitant to play him. Burnley had a, had a dirty, dirty shot. You know what you get with Burnley, and, and to be fair to them, they are what they are. They don't change. They don't claim to be anything else. Their fans are singing horrible football or something, or something along those lines. Um, you know, we hate football or something like that. 
you know what you're going to get. They kick you, they, they battle with you, they're physical, they're hard to, to play against, they're hard to beat. And in that first half, we just played into their hands, playing long balls, playing over-the-top balls. And what we needed to do is what we did in the second half, get the ball on the floor and move it. I know one's just Townsend's, obviously, um, you know, Michael Keane's goal was in the air, but get the ball on the floor and move it, move it fast in and out, the, you know, in the lines, from the, the, the wingers to, to, to the midfielders, into the forwards. Alan, I thought, in that second half was absolutely excellent, excellent performance. Seamus Coleman worked his ass off, battled, was in the face of Burnley players, showing his leadership. You know, Yeri Mina, like I said, Michael Keane, both brilliant in the second half. Jordan Pickford coming out, collecting balls, screaming at his defence to do better. Um, you know, again, obviously, like we said, Andrew Townsend, Damari Gray. I, I just thought we were much better in the second half. And yes, I might be a bit high on emotion at the moment, but when you see a first half like that and you... I sort of had a feeling in me, in me sort of in me gut. I thought he'll change this. This will, will this will change. Whether it's personnel, whether it's system, it'll change. And I suppose the the thing for Everton now is to go out and make sure that we don't have first half performances like Southampton, like tonight, where we're looking at it thinking, right, we need it. You know, we need to change in the second half. As good as tonight was, and as good as the Southampton game was. We what well, we don't want to be in a position where we're at half time thinking something needs to change. We want to be in a position where we're at half time and we're three 0 up thinking this is absolutely excellent. So there's definitely room to improve. There's definitely room, you know, things to work on. Of course there is, as there always is. But I just thought we come alive in that second half. I really, really didn't. You know what? If we wouldn't have won that game, I'd have probably spent five minutes of this video talking about Martin Atkinson. I won't. I'll leave it to a twenty second clip of me saying what I'm about to say. That could possibly be the worst refereeing performance I've ever seen in a game of football. Martin Atkinson, for me, is the worst referee at any level of football on the planet. Not just in this country, on the planet. That fella couldn't referee a children's tea party. He is dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. I don't know how he keeps getting a job, and I don't know how he keeps getting games at Goodison Park. He is the most openly biased referee that you will ever see. And today, you give everything Burnley's way. I don't know how many harsh challenges they had to throw in before he, you know, he, he done anything. Their player was on the floor. He's straight over our players on the floor. He's not interested. He, he's just a dreadful referee. And he'll probably be sitting in the changing room fuming now that Burnley haven't managed to get something out of that game. But you know what? What a second half performance. What a second half performance. Not great for the opening, not even the opening half, the opening 50, 60 minutes. Not great, but change of system, change of personnel and a bit of confidence, a bit of momentum, a bit of, you know, a, a bit of energy that the crowd... As soon as Michael Keane's goal went in, the crowd apt it up. You know, in, in, again, like I said, the atmosphere, electric. As soon as Andrew Townsend's goal went in, everyone, you know, off the seat, standing up, screaming, shouting, getting behind the lads. And, and, and you could see that that was, you know, that was um, portrayed on the pitch. You know, that energy and that, that, you know, that atmosphere in the stadium was shown on the pitch and was directly sort of put to the players then. And you could see that. Um, you really could. And, and like I said, for me, just an, an absolutely top second half performance, turned it on. And yeah, what more can you ask for? Another 3 1 win. Everton joint top at the table now. Would have been nice to win 5 0 and go top, but joint top anyway with all the other teams that have drawn one game and won three. Um, but yeah, like I said, next step is to not get to the point where we're sitting here saying, what a poor. 55 60 minutes because let's not sugarcoat it we weren't you know we weren't great for the entire game the first 50 60 minutes was was poor we were really really poor and Burnley had far too much time on the ball and found it far too easily we turned it on we switched it about we uh, and we were the much better side in that last half an hour but and then you know again Burnley scored you know towards the end of the game obviously got ruled offside but they scored again from a ball into the box so it's very clear what we need to work on we need to work on being that good from the off and set pieces because they, it just seems every goal we we, we seem to be conceding at the moment. Or, or we're, we're at our most vulnerable when clubs have set pieces, balls into the box. We just don't really seem to be able to deal with them. So, stuff to work on. But, nevertheless, a great win. Brilliant to see Goodison Park like that again. And that, you know, when the Corey scored that fourth, I thought, what's better than this? Unfortunately, it was reeled offside. And I think that sort of killed our momentum a little bit. But, look, we got the job done. Another 3-1 win. What more can you ask for? Anyway... This is the Instant Match Reaction. Big, big thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you have enjoyed the video. Hit the like button as well. We'll be back with the player ratings very shortly and then the game review um, a little bit later on. Um, sorry, not later on. What am I talking about? Tomorrow morning. So join us for that one. Massive thanks for watching. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Leave a like if you've enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And we'll see you soon on the Mighty Blues. Cheers for watching. See you after.